The following tutorial is brought to you by WholeLoops.com. It's production time. I'm Reed Stefan, realist puppet oh, in. Oh, let me finish my intro. <laughs> I'm Reed Stefan, realist puppet in the game. And I'm Kara. And today we're going to show you guys how to make cheap vocals sound expensive. That's right. So I ordered us a Focusrite Scarlet 2i2 and an AKG C214. Focusrite was actually my first interface. Me too, actually. We, yeah. I'm pretty sure it was everybody's, everybody's. first interface. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one. Five with the holes. Okay. Uh, oh, see, red yeah, means see? eclipsed. Yellow means that you're about to clip. Uh, so... Now we're setting the gain for having it be as close to yellow as possible without actually being in the yellow or the red. Aim for medium volume. The next really important thing that you need for professional sounding vocals is an acoustically treated room. Or simply just put a carpet on the floor, put a couch in the room, put a mattress on the wall, anything that will block the reflective surfaces in your studio will help the quality of your vocals tremendously. Because as you can see, we go out in the hallway, A, 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 not too good for recording vocals. So I click command comma for our settings and we wanna make sure that our output and our input are set to our scarlet. And then the latency buffer size is set to 128. I know you're waiting up for me. But I don't want no bad intentions. I'll only let you next to me. If you're serious, serious. Before we start mixing our recordings, there's a couple things that I like to do in the editing process to make the vocal sound a lot smoother. First, I double click on the file and we're gonna go over here and turn warp off. The sound quality sounds much better with it off. And now I'm gonna go in and edit out my breaths, S's and harsh consonants to make it all sound a little bit smoother. So in the beginning here, there's a breath. We don't need that. So we're just going to eliminate that and add a fade. Let me zoom in a bit more so you can see. Okay, so for this breath, I want to keep it in to make the vocal sound natural, but I'm going to turn the volume down so it doesn't sound too disturbing. But I don't want no bad now bad came in a little bit too hot, so I'm gonna edit this word and also turn the volume down to even it out a bit. Bad and on intentions, there's a T that I'm also going to turn the volume down on and an S. And that should smooth it out. Bad yeah, sounds great. Let's mix it. Are you one of the millions of music producers who don't know how to play real musical instruments? Did you quit guitar lessons back in middle school because it made your fingers hurt? Here at Whole Loops, we've got the solution for you. Introducing the Guitar Bundle, an organic collection of electric and acoustic progressions ready to drop into your next smash hit. The guitar bundle is available now only at holoops.com. Here we are inside the Ableton session Kara just recorded into. The very first plugin that I want to load up on these is a little bit of tuning. And since we're on a budget, we're going to use Waves Tune. So these are the Waves Tune settings that I chose. Me, but I don't want no bad intentions. I'll only let you next to me. I like to low cut Kara's voice around 70. That's generally a number I choose for females. Unless they have a really bright, thin voice, I might low cut it at a higher number like 80. If it's a male, I might low cut it at a number like 60, but 70 tends to be my default position. And when I'm using the Ableton EQ, definitely the steeper roll off. Next, I wanna duplicate this EQ and we're gonna do, instead of a roll off, we're gonna do a low shelf. And we're gonna do this low shelf gain at about minus three. We're gonna put the Q at about 12 o'clock, 1.5. And let's have the frequency be 3000. Taking the whole spectrum and tilting the lows down and the highs up a little bit. And instead of boosting the highs, we're just gonna boost the output gain a little bit since the highs are really untouched. I know you're waiting up for me, but I don't want no bad 
And without it. And with it. Next plugin I'm going to load up is Arvox. I like to use it so that the attenuation hits at about minus six. And then I usually have to bump this just a little bit above where I bring down the compression. I know you're waiting up for me, but I don't want no bad intentions. And without it. I'll only let you next to me. It's about the same volume. If you're serious, serious. Oh, if you're Grab an Ableton saturator, and I'm going to drop it after these EQs before the Arvox. I think I want to remove the lows, do some distortion, maybe about six, and then minus five on. I know you're waiting up for me, but I don't want no bad intentions. And without it. I'll only let you next to me. If you're serious, serious. The next thing that I want to do is a little bit of multiband dynamic control. So I'm going to grab the OTT preset that comes here with Ableton, drop it on here, and let's start out by taking the amount knob down. I know you're waiting up for me. We only need a little but bit of this. I don't want no bad intentions. I'll only let you next to me. If you're serious, serious. The next plugin that I want to load up is a little bit of parallel compression. Glue compressor, and I'm going to hit Command G on the glue compressor so that we can put this in a rack, create chain, and let's go ahead and dial in some slower attack like 10, and let's do a faster release, maybe not all the way fast, and let's do the highest ratio they can give us. I know you're waiting up for me, but I don't want no bad intentions. I'll only let you next to me If you're serious, serious Without it Oh, if you're serious, serious And with it Ooh, oh, yeah If you're serious, serious Ooh. I think some sauce that would be perfect for this is some reverb So let's make another rack after our glue compression rack And this is about to be our effects rack And I also want to invert the phase of the reverb. So we're going to grab the utility, invert left, invert right. And this should help separate the dry vocal from the reverb even more by having them out of phase from one another. Let's get a delay going in here. I'm going to load up the echo. We can drop it right into this effects rack that we created for the reverb. Invert the phase. They got a button for it right here, so we don't need to use a utility. Let's see what we get. I know you're waiting up for me. But I don't want no bad intentions I'll only let you next to me If you're serious, serious oh, if I want to sauce up these backgrounds a little bit. They're feeling kind of dry compared to our lead. So I'm just going to copy this whole chain. And now I want my low cut to be significant on my background vocals. And we also don't need to do the same amount. Now I'm going to add some sauce to the entire vocals group. So I just highlighted them all, hit Command G. I'm going to hit this with one more OTT at a really low percentage, like 10. And this is going to help compress the dry vocal together with the reverb, glue it all together really nice. I know nice. you're waiting up for me, but I don't want no bad intentions. Without it. I'll only let you next to me. If you're serious, serious. And with it. Oh, if you're serious. So there you guys have it, our guide to making expensive vocals with cheap gear. And we want you guys to sound great too. So we're gonna be giving away this Focusrite and this AKG microphone. That's right. All you have to do to enter the contest is head over to Kara's Instagram. I'll put a link to it in the description and you'll see this video up on her page. Just drop a comment on the video because we got three prizes and on March 1st, we're gonna be picking a winner and we'll catch you guys next time in another tutorial too. I forgot. <laughs> Peace out. Peace out everybody.